My name is Ibrahim Dursus. I would like to talk about joining of a senior junior developer. More and more people are changing their career and becoming developers in a relatively later stage of their lives. It's a rough but exciting journey. I know it in the first hand because I'm one of them. I became a developer at the age of 40, and that's how I came up with the title, actually, because I was relatively senior age and I was looking for junior developer positions. <laughs> I would like to talk about first my story, then why people make this change, why to go an extra mile, and my advice is to those who may, uh, who may be working or work together in the future with a senior junior developer. I'm from Turkey originally. I was uh, working in the Turkish army as a military officer. In 2016, I came to Belgium for work. After two years, me and my wife, we decided not to go back and stay in Belgium. Let's say it wasn't so difficult for Belgium to come to <laughs> But once we decided, there was a problem. My experience wasn't applicable in the civilian industry. So I had to put bread on the table, I had to find a work. And I want to change the career. I didn't know what to do. I always had something, uh, some interest in technology, and what's in my mind was I will do something in IT. What in IT, I don't didn't know. But the idea was something to be in IT. Meanwhile, I started to study Dutch, and I was looking for opportunities. A friend of mine came to me and told that he found a course, a free course. It's called Take Your Future. I don't know if you know that Take Your Future is actually originated uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, that time, a uh, branch was opened in Brussels. Uh, it's a free course that helps newcomers to get uh, necessary skills to find a job in the uh, tech industry. <coughs> so when my friend told it to me, I told him, good. I don't think that I'm in the target group. You know, I think that they will be searching for someone in early 20s who will learn something easily, who will find a job easily. I don't think that they will be interested to spend their time on almost 40 year old dude. <coughs> but no matter what, we went there, we talked to the uh, management, they accepted us, and thankfully, I studied for six months in Echo Future and graduated as a front end developer. And joined my first company, it was Sustainable Based Finance, for a startup in Brussels. Uh, it's actually when I came across this domain driven design, I will come to that in the uh, next part of the talk. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, startup couldn't survive because of COVID and everything. So I joined my current company. It's AD uh, is in Leuven, Belgium, and we are working uh, on the application custom made. It's custom made AI. Uh, we are automizing the uh, custom separation process. You can say we are in the business of import exports. <laughs> So the motivation, why people make the career change? Main is money. Everybody needs to put bread on the table and let's accept that tech jobs are paying more than uh, other jobs uh, in comparison. Or if you go online, uh, there are a lot of promises if you, what, what you can earn as a developer, what you can do as a developer to make money. It can be really tempting for people to change their career into tech and uh, to, have, to earn more money. The other one is just simply to make a difference. People might be bored of their repetitive and boring jobs, and they may just want to create a difference in the universe. They want to be part of the application that people touch in their phones every day. They might be part of uh, an application that makes people's jobs easier. I always, not be, uh, exactly the reason I made the decision, but before I always found this very exciting and admiring uh, that people build all these applications, this software that makes everything so easy. The other one can be that they might be working in difficult conditions. For example, two examples from Hacker Future. There was a friend of mine, uh, he was working in a storage facility in a rather physical job. There was another lady, she was a Ukrainian immigrant. She had a university degree in Ukraine. And uh, she was working as a translator there. But when she came to Belgium, she couldn't find a job and she was working as a cleaning lady. They are both now working as a front end developers. And also, you're not supposed to have exactly a very physical job, but still, the attractiveness of uh, the convenience of working at office space or remotely from your uh, comfort of your home can be also be tempting and attractive for people who want to make a change in their career. Desperation. <coughs> to be honest, that's kind of my case. When I found a job, I was only uh, at the end of my savings. I had enough money to pay only one more uh, month's rent. 
And uh, it was one of the reasons that I decided to change the tech because I realized that I can uh, get the necessary skills uh, quicker in uh, comparison with other jobs and find the job as a result. The convenience of learning the basic skills. You can go online if you have time, capacity, and will. You can spend time without spending any time. You can get enough skills to create something basic or even find a job in a year or even maybe less than a year time on your own pace. To go around the language barrier. If you talk about the immigrants like me, they are mostly speaking English, but they may end up in a country where native language is not English. And to find a job in that country without speaking the native language can be very difficult. So software jobs are very forgiving when it comes to language. Uh, a lot of companies work with English or uh, they accept you to speak only English. So if you are going to work with a senior junior dev, what would be my advice? I don't know if you are familiar with meta imposter syndrome. It's when you know a lot of people have imposter syndrome, but you witness how competent they are. It was for me, when I joined AE, <laughs> uh, our first project was iLearn. We were four developers. I was the only one who didn't have a computer science master's degree in Kowloon. So, and one of my colleagues told that she has imposter syndrome, and a lot of developers in the company has imposter syndrome. That's exactly what I thought at the point. So if you have a senior junior developer colleague, make sure that, to be sure that, they have worse imposter syndrome than you have. <laughs> <laughs> when you work with them, don't forget that these people learn something totally new in a later stage of their life. So they love to learn. Try to help them uh, and make them understand that it's okay not to know. Because in my previous career, it wasn't okay to say, I don't know. And uh, I was very surprised when I asked a question to a senior colleague and thought, I don't know, let's check together. It was very comforting as well, actually. Technical literacy can be a problem. Just like speaking a language, we use a lot of grammatical rules. But when we come across this textbook definition of the grammatical rule, we may not know it, but we use it every day. So a lot of senior junior developers are learning things by doing. So they might know what they are doing, but they might not know how it is called technically or in the literature. So when you talk to them, when you have a discussion, uh, make sure that they understand the concepts. You try to make them simplify or at least ask them if they are familiar with the concept. I just forgot something here. Uh, their previous experience can be very useful. If they can't, if they're not aware of this, try to help them to use it. For example, your colleague can be a truck driver. It means that this person can keep their attention for a longer period of time. That can be very useful while you are coding. Or person was a cleaner, like I told. So they can be very good at spotting small details. So it can be very useful while you are debugging. Or working in a storage facility, so they have an understanding of how things are stored or like organized, uh, classified. So it can be very useful when they understand uh, the concept of architecture, the software architecture, or building the uh, structure of software they are building. And last, be affirmative. Uh, you can't imagine how far uh, good code, well done, you did a good job, can go. Even these people are older than you, they might appreciate such appreciation a lot. Thank you for listening to me.